So for this one, figure out how many kilograms of water this tank holds. Well, we went over yesterday that there is an equivalence between metric mass and volume. Remember, one gram is the mass of one milliliter of water. So if we have this in milliliters, we could find the grams and then, of course, the kilograms. Well, one, so one gram is the mass of one milliliter of water. One milliliter, if you recall, is equal to one cubic centimeter. So we need to find the volume of this in cubic centimeters. There are two ways we can go about that. We can either convert each of these measurements into centimeters and then find the volume. Or we can find the volume and convert the volume into cubic centimeters. I'm going to do the second one first. To find the volume of this, I'm going to do the area of the base, which is 38 by 26. Nine hundred eighty-eight square inches. So in the volume, the area of that base times that height to ten inches. So nine thousand eight hundred eighty cubic inches. But now remember, we need this into cubic centimeters. So I put my cubic inches over one, and now we've got to figure out our equivalency between cubic inches and cubic centimeters. What's bigger, an inch or a centimeter? An inch. So remember, the bigger unit always gets the one. Cubic centimeters, well, how many centimeters? One inch is how many centimeters? Perfect, 2.54 centimeters. But this is cubic inches, which means it's 2.54 by 2.54 by 2.54, right? So it's three dimensions. I'm just going to take 2.54 and I'm going to cube it. 16.387 we're going to call that. So because we knew the conversion in linear units, just regular inches and centimeters, we can figure out the conversion in volume in cubic inches and cubic centimeters. So take our 9880 times that 16.387064. We get 161.904.19. We're going to go 0.2. And that is cubic centimeters. That's our volume. How many milliliters is that going to be? Perfect. Exact same because one milliliter is one cubic centimeter. And of course, that's going to be how many grams? The same. So to turn that into kilograms, grams to kilograms is three spots to the left on the chart. That's 161.9 kilograms of water. Does that make sense? Yes. You made all these centimeters first? All right, that's the way I'm going to show you just now. So, might be just a round off error. Yeah. So let's convert each of these. 38 inches. One inch is 2.54 centimeters. So 38 times 2.54. Is 96.52. So, I'm just going to write that in right here. 96.52. 26, I'm going to do the same thing. 26 times 2.54. I'm not going to write out the conversion this time. 66.04. And then 10 times 2.54 is 25.4 centimeters. Are those the numbers you got? Do they look familiar? Okay. So now we're just going to multiply those up. 96.54 times 66.04 times 25.4. Bless you. 
So we get that number. That should be really close. You may have rounded some of them, or? Okay. That would have been, I had a test or a quiz, I probably would have accepted that. It was within like 1%, 1.5%. One okay, any questions on that? Okay. Well then. Today we're going to look at just a few different things that we're going to wrap up. Now we're going to review a little bit because this is the end of Unit 3. So tomorrow in class we do have our Unit 3 test. <clears throat> the first thing we want to talk about is time. Now we've done a little bit with time already in our dual unit conversions. So I'm not going to bother going over with you the whole 24 hours in a day, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. I'm assuming you understand that. But let's say I tell you that there are 23 milliseconds. What is a millisecond? Well, milla is just our metric prefix from our measurements. Remember, milli was... 1, 1,000. So 23 milliseconds is a 23 thousandths, or 0 0.023 seconds. Along with milliseconds, we have microseconds. We might have 400 microseconds. A micro... is a millionth. So 400 millionths, 400 microseconds can be 0.4 milliseconds or 0 0.0004 regular seconds. <coughs> so I wonder where would any of that be important to you? Um, your delays in your electrical circuits are microsecond delays. Um, your starters usually have a, like a 20 to 30 microsecond delay in them. Um, they, use, they don't have uh, points in them anymore, but they usually have contacts in them that have a, if you turn on the starter, there's a the store charge for just that few microseconds before they surge the starter because it takes a surge of power. Your battery in itself at standard voltage will not get your starter moving. You have to have that little extra surge of power to make it go. That's about all we're going to say about time. Next, we want to talk about temperature. Temperature is very different from our other measurements as far as our converting is concerned. And when we deal with temperature, our two benchmarks that we tend to use are the temperature at which water freezes, of course, freezes or thaws, and when water boils or condenses. <coughs> In the Fahrenheit system, which I'm just going to abbreviate as F because I'm not going to try to spill up Fahrenheit. What temperature does water freeze at? 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Good. Anybody remember what temperature water boils at? 212. Good. I've actually in recent years I've had a few groups that nobody knew that. In the Celsius system, the metric system, though, what temperature does water freeze? Zero degrees Celsius. What temperature does it boil? 100 degrees Celsius. If we look at the, the, the number of degrees between freezing and thawing, over here if we did 212 minus 32, that's 180 degrees. Over here, of course, 100 minus zero is 100 degrees. That 100 degree difference between freezing and thawing of water, by the way, um, the Celsius scale is sometimes called the centigrade scale. 
Centi meaning 100, grade meaning divisions. That's 100 divisions between freezing and thawing of water. But you'll also notice that there's way more Fahrenheit degrees than there is Celsius degrees. That ratio of 180 over 100 is a very important ratio in our conversions. If I reduce that, both of those can be divided by 20. It gives me a 9 to 5 ratio. For every 9 degrees Fahrenheit, there's 5 degrees Celsius. So a 9 degree increase in temperature in the Fahrenheit scale would be a 5 degree increase in temperature on the Celsius scale. Or the other way around, a 5 degree increase in temperature on the Celsius scale would be 9 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale. Now all of our other units of measure have at a common zero point. For length, zero inches is zero centimeters. For mass, you know, zero grams is zero pounds. Zero kilograms is zero pounds. For capacity, zero cups or zero quarts is zero liters. I mean, zero is zero. It's nothing. For temperature, there is not that common zero point. So our conversions have to look very different. Rather than just having an equivalency and using that conversion factor, the canceling units, we have to use a full formula. So to go from degrees Fahrenheit into degrees Celsius, we have to use the formula. Celsius temperature is equal to our Fahrenheit temperature, minus 32 degrees. That minus 32 degrees is just taking this down to zero so that it gives it a common zero point. And then times 5 ninths. Because there's only 5 Celsius degrees for every 9 Fahrenheit degrees. So let's take a look at this. Let's do human body temperature. 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. And let's convert that in degrees Celsius. Anybody know off the top of their head what that what body temperature is in Celsius? So we're going to take 98.6, put it in there where F is. And it's just a matter of order of operations from here. So what's the first thing we have to do? Subtract, yeah. In the parentheses, we got to subtract and get 66.6. .6. Now there's nothing left to do inside the parentheses. So 5 ninths times 66.6. .6. It'll be 37 degrees Celsius. So human body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius. If we have degrees Celsius, and I want to convert to degrees Fahrenheit, I take my Celsius temperature times 9 fifths and then add 32 to my temperature in Fahrenheit. Now before I do an example here, look at this. What happened here? We subtracted 32 multiplied by 5 ninths. Over here we did the opposite. We divided by 5 ninths, or multiplied by 9 fifths, and then added the 32. We just, now we did the opposite steps, but reversed the order, opposite order. When we solve equations, that practice is going to be very important as well. Reverse the order. So any, anyway, let's say that the weatherman says it's going to be 10 degrees Celsius out there today. Is that a nice day? I mean, do you need your heavy coat? Shorts? Let's say you look. We're going to put in 20 for Celsius. Nine-fifths times 20 is 36. Plus 32 is 68 degrees. That is a very nice day in my book. Any questions? So in your notes, I want you to try one for me. If I give you negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit, how much is that in degrees Celsius? And negative 40 degrees is the one temperature that's the same in both scales. So if we were going to convert this, you'd have the negative 40 in here. You would subtract 32. Then times 5 ninths. 
So negative 42 minus 32 is a negative 72. And negative 72 times 5 ninths is negative 40. Okay. It happens. Now, like I said, tomorrow is our unit 3 test. So I want to do a little reviewing with you. Some of the things that people screw up the most often on this test. How do I make that conversion? What's that? Yeah. So yeah, seven feet squared, one square foot is 144 square inches. So yes, it is seven times 144. One thousand and eight square inches. How about this one? Hopefully I put a problem on the board. How about that one? Eighty-one cubic yards. Cubic yards on bottom, cubic feet on top. Which one's the bigger unit? Yards. So yes, eighty-one times twenty-seven. Twenty-one eighty-seven. about 5.2 centimeters squared into meters squared. <coughs> What's that? Careful. So centimeters to meters is two spots to the left. Yes, yeah, so we have to double it. Because it's squared, you got to double it. This one, point zero zero seven meters cubed into millimeters cubed. <laughs> meters to millimeters is three <laughs> spots to the right. Okay? So we got his cubes, we got triple. That's gonna be nine. One, two, three. Then we gotta do six more. That is seven million. Millimeters cubed. Look from here. Yeah, I probably would hate to do it. If he had told you that. <clears throat> Going back a little bit further. Remember how to do these. When we're multiplying numbers with powers, what do we do to the power? 10 to the 14th, yes. When we're multiplying exponents with the same base, we add the power. Very good. <clears throat> How about when we are dividing exponents with the same base? We subtract the power. That's going to be 10 to the 5th. How about when we do the power of a power? 20. Why 20? You multiply them. Very good. 
Well, how about when we do a whole bunch of stuff all at once? Look at that. Start on perfect. We start on the top. What's that going to give us? What are we going to do to the powers? Add, subtract, multiply. We're going to add them. So that's 10 to the negative 2. Very good. So on bottom, we still have 10 to the negative 8. Now we're dividing, so we have to subtract. Now this one's tricky. Negative 2 minus a negative 8. Remember, that becomes negative 2 plus a positive 8, so it's a positive 6. So that's 10 to the 6, still to the negative 4. What's our final step? Multiply. So it's been a long day before 9 o'clock. I hate to see you at 3.30. Try this one in your notes quick. You guys need another minute or you want to give it to your watch? One second, okay. Okay, so we'll start out here on top. 10 to the negative 9th times 10 to the 11th is 10 to the, that should be 2. Negative 9 plus 11 is positive 2, right? I'm bottom. 10 to the 5th times 10 to the negative 12th. Careful. Negative 7. Negative seven. Yeah, you're a step ahead of us. So now we have, come on. 10 to the 2nd divided by 10 to the negative 7th is 10 to the 9th. 2 minus negative 7 is 2 plus positive 7. Nine. 10 to the 9th to the 3rd power is 10 to the 27th. You wrote them down wrong? That'll do it. No, I didn't write them down wrong up there. I wrote them down wrong up there. Yeah. I didn't get positive. How uh, did this get positive? Yeah. 2 minus a negative 7 becomes 2 plus a positive 7. Remember, subtraction means add the opposite. We are back in your textbook. Page 154, 1 through 31, the odd. I'm wrong. Let's see. Page 156, 1 through 19, the odd. It's only been a couple weeks.